So uh, my name is uh, Gerardo Quinones, and uh, despite appearances, I'm not a faculty member. I'm, I'm just a very, very old alum, graduate of Pan American University, class of 1977. Thank you. I have, uh, I received a double major in mathematics and chemistry and a minor in computer science. There was no major in computer science at the time. And I had, uh, well, enough courses to have two majors in chemistry. I haven't touched touch a test tube since I graduated because I've been devoting my life to uh, computers over the last uh, close to 40 years. I now hold a master's in computer science from the University of Massachusetts in Boston. I've worked for a lot of companies. Um, right off of uh, Pan Am, I went to work uh, for Lockheed Engineering and Management Services, uh, a division of Lockheed Aerospace at the Johnson Space Center. I had the privilege of working on uh, the space shuttle, uh, STS-1 through STS-4, and the Apollo one test. And uh, so that was six years. And then after that, another 15 years working for a natural gas transportation company called the Tennessee Gas Pipeline that moved gas from, uh, well, from Louisiana and Texas all the way to uh, Vermont and that area. Provided. 40% of the natural gas consumed by the city of New York, and that was just one company. And then I've, I've worked for other companies. Most recently, uh, I've been working over the last seven years for a company called Bright Cove that is in the business of helping companies that have an internet presence deliver video. Uh, think of it as YouTube, but uh, for professional companies. So our customers are the New York Times. Uh, Comedy Central is one of our customers. Uh, we, the Metropolitan uh, Opera is also one of our customers. And like them, there's thousands and thousands. Um, this is going to sound like a follow-up uh, to Dr. Harwood's presentation because I work for one of those companies that collects metadata on your viewing experience. And we do it for innocent purposes, I assure you. <laughs> you can trust us. <laughs> All we want to do is see if you're having a good video experience. And in order to do that, we collect information on what video you're watching, when did you watch it, what is your internet IP address, which we convert into uh, everything, city, state, uh, who is your internet service provider, and then we collect information from your browser that tells us what device you're running on, uh, what browser you're using, and uh, what operating system. And all of this information is used to assess the quality of our, of our service. Uh, and also to bill our customers because our customers pay us to make sure that you guys get a good viewing experience. Uh, the company has about 450 individual uh, employees, and it is distributed worldwide. Uh, so we have offices in, uh, in London. We have offices in Madrid. Uh, we have them in uh, Tokyo. We have them in Sydney, Australia. I work off the Boston uh, office, although I'm remotely located in Texas. We have people in Florida, Seattle, San Francisco, and so on and so forth. So our presence is uh, global in the literal sense, and in, in order to then communicate, we uh, rely a lot on uh, things like uh, Mr. Cantu mentioned, the data centers. We have data centers in Chicago and Tempe, Arizona, and in Boston and Somerville, but we also use a lot of the cloud computing. I, my personal involvement uh, with the company uh, right now is in uh, collecting and analyzing all of this data that uh, comes in from every video that you watch on one of our video, Brightco video players. And we collect about uh, a billion events per day, and it's roughly one terabyte of data per day that we collect in real time, and we analyze and present uh, with maybe a 25% lag from the time we receive the data to the time we, we analyze it. Um, I'm going to just, in the brief time that we have, give you 
just a taste of, of the system that we use to collect the data. I'm not going to be able to show you some of the more interesting graphs that get produced from this data because all of that is behind a firewall, a virtual private network. And because I'm uh, doing the presentation on a machine that is outside of the VPN, then I'm only going to be able to see, show you that part of the system that actually lives outside. Um, the system is called Rain Man. And uh, it's called Rain Man as an homage to the idiot savant uh, that uh, was able to remember everything. So that's the ideal here is a system that can remember every fact that it's presented with and is able to uh, give it back to you. But it's also conceptually the idea is that we live in the cloud, we have the information in the cloud, and the Rain Man gathers that data from the cloud and condenses it into information that comes down with rain. The front end to the system, which I won't be able to show you, is called Rainbow because after a rain, you see a rainbow, and the uh, UI is very colorful. And uh, so that's where that name comes from. So with that, so um, this is uh, the main uh, console. When you go, this system is all built in, uh, in Google software uh, in, in the Google uh, cloud environment. You're seeing three different projects. The Rainman project is the one that I work on. Uh, as you can see, uh, what you see there are the charges. This is how much it's costing to run the system roughly every month. So this is a system that collects a terabyte of information and is able to analyze it and produce it. And it costs us $2,500 a month to run it. This system produces has the equivalent capacity as one of our departments inside the company that does reporting and analytics for the company itself that is customer facing that has a budget of about a quarter million dollars uh, a year. So what I'm showing you here is that you as an individual can actually get an account in Google and buy yourself some of these services. Uh, get a server for pennies uh, a day and uh, get big data and uh, do your own analysis. And there's a pretty hefty uh, quota that uh, Google gives you for free. You have to actually do so a fair amount of, uh, of work on the system before it actually starts incurring charges. So this is within the economic abilities of even uh, a college student. The system itself, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, the uh, compute engine. And over the last four days, how much CPU I'm consuming. This uh, big jump that you see here is where there were some logs that had backed up and it took a while to, uh, once we discovered that they were backed up to, to catch up with them. But, um, uh, the system itself is uh, running roughly, well, not roughly, exactly 89 servers. Uh, and each one of those servers is collecting logs of events that uh, your players emit. Let's say when you're playing a video, uh, when you pause the video, when you scrub the video, if you move backwards, if you had an error, if it's showing an ad, uh, we don't know what kind of ad it is. We just know an ad was played. But those are the kinds of, uh, of statistics that we collect. And um, all of that data gets funneled into a, um, a BigQuery database. And a BigQuery database um, looks kind of like this. Uh, we generate one table's worth of data per day, and we put it in something called a metrics bucket. So I'll show you the data that is uh, arriving in the system right now. Uh, so right now, all of this, uh, each day starts in uh, GMT time, Greenwich Mean Time. So 
we're right now early on to the, uh, uh, what is it, the 26th or 27th of, uh, of uh, May. If we look at the 26th, you'll see a full day's worth of data that's already been completed. You see the number of rows. We have about a billion rows, a little over that, and uh, the size of the data is 840. So 0.84 terabytes worth of data. Yes. No. Google calls it BigQuery. Uh, you can Google for BigQuery. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and um, the amazing thing about this system is that uh, you can query it using a language that's very similar to SQL. It's almost identical to SQL. Uh, but uh, it takes your query and it breaks it apart and it sends it out to thousands of servers, literally. And it gives you back an answer on a table that has a billion rows in a few seconds. So it, it has the capacity of analyzing massive quantities of data. And it doesn't really cost you all that much. So I'm going to query this particular day just as a demonstration. So I'm going to say, show me the events for the day. And uh, give me a count of events from this table. And uh, group by event, order by count, and descent. This. Pardon? Oh, yes. Thank you. Group by event. Is that better? Uh, and I can see that it is because I get a little check mark that says uh, this query will process roughly 19.1 gigabytes of data. Now remember that this, uh, this table has close to a terabyte of data. But the way BigQuery works is it partitions the data by column. And it only charges you for the columns that you touch. So you could have a thousand columns with lots of information. But if you only look at one column, you get charged for that column. But it's going to scan the entire column. So it's going to scan a billion rows out of that one column. So let's run it. And uh, so here are the results. Yeah, 9.6 cents is what it costs to run this query. And as you can see, it uh, ran in 2.5 seconds. Uh, we can uh, get a little more specific. Uh, let's go back and look at the schema of this table. And uh, OK, so we have view IP city. So we can say where geo IP city equal Edinburgh. All right, so it's going to cost us a little more because now we're looking at two columns simultaneously. Um, and uh, let's just run it. Let's pretend that there's only one city called Edinburgh in the world without the H. So these are video engagement. Uh, video engagement is every time someone has actually watched a section of video that lasts about 10 seconds. What video it is. Uh, we could find out if we wanted to. Number of video impressions, that's when it just shows you the image of the video. And it allows you to select whether you want to see it or not. So every time we present a video, or offer a video to, a, to an end user to play, that's called an impression. And a video view is when they actually click play. And we collect all sorts of other information. Uh, the, when the video started fetching, when we unloaded data, the response start, connection end, lookup end, and so on, and so on, and so on. Every time something happened on that player, we get an event, some more common than others. Well, there's a media connector. So um, that's, uh, in general, uh, what we do. Uh, we collect this information. Now, the analysis is where it gets interesting, because now you want to know how long it took, for example, to load a particular video. So we have to find a load start event and a load end event for a particular session. And then 
hook those two together so that you can compute how long it took on your particular browser on that particular day to load a video so that you could watch it. And that's the nickel tour of uh, Rain Man. Pardon? Quartz, yes. <laughs> if we add more columns, it'll cost a little more. But we can also do this to avoid that cost. We can say, well, don't show me all of the data. Just show me the data that landed on this table uh, and in the last hour. And of course, to do that and to not complicate things too many, too much, let's um, look at the most recent day so that we're looking at the edge of the table as the data is arriving, what has arrived in the last hour. Let's see if it's the 27. Yep. So now, it only cost us half a cent or 0.6 cents because we're only looking at an hour's worth of data. Uh, we can look at historical periods uh, by specifying an epoch time, uh, it, which is the number of seconds that have elapsed since uh, the birth of the internet, which is officially January 1st, 1970. But I don't want to do the math. So it's easier just to say, go back an hour from now and show me what data has landed. And the only table that is receiving data is the most current table. Yes. Yes, in fact, uh, because this system is open to our customer support personnel throughout the world. When one of our publishers calls that they're having problems, customer support can use this system to try to narrow down are they having issues with a particular content delivery network, or is it an internet service provider? Is Comcast throttling their service? Those kinds of things. So customer support does that. And every once in a while, they, uh, well, they do something foolish like select star from universe. And, uh, and then, uh, yes, uh, we actually have Yes, we, we actually have what is the video title. We don't have the name of the person. Uh, we just have the, IS, the, the IP address. And in fact, in, uh, because we're doing business in Germany, we're having to throttle back from that a little bit in order to comply with German law that is stricter than United States law and have to erase the last octet of the IP address so that it's not a specific IP address. It's one of 256 possible ones that in, in a general area. But for our purposes, that's good enough because we just want the general geographic area where the traffic is coming from so that we can determine if there's a localized problem or if it's a generalized problem. Yes. This is, this is unaggregated data. It is not aggregated until I run a query. Every last single event with a timestamp down to the milliseconds is in there from every player everywhere in the world. Indirectly, not, uh, yes, from the client browser, they go to a set of collectors that are um, in the cloud. Those collectors, capture the data and put it out on logs. This system grabs the logs and pushes them into BigQuery, hence the 20 minute or 25 minute lag from real time. And the reason we do that is because, well, we're cheap. Um, Google has a feature where you can inject the data directly into BigQuery in real time, event by event, uh, but it costs you. They charge you for that. Um, if you do it in batches and you put it out there and say, whenever you get a chance, Upload that, that's free. So we chose free and we take a 20, 20 minute penalty. Yes? I, I don't know. I, I couldn't answer you uh, that question because that would involve getting into what the uh, Java, the Node.js script is doing or the JavaScript. Um, but
Right. No, this is this is actually a beacon embedded in the player itself that is calling to a metrics collector and says, "Hey, somebody just hit play, or somebody just pause." Uh, those kinds of events. We find out all sorts of interesting information in this. Uh, someone will bring up a, a video, they'll watch for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then they'll pause. And then two days later, they come back and resume. <laughs> Data there. So this guy went away and left his browser open for two days. So it's pretty interesting. Yes. Yes. We are reporting to our to the to our publishers. The, our customers we call publishers. They're the ones that own the content. Um, we report to them how many video impressions uh, we generated, how many video views, how, how many seconds of video engagement we delivered, and how many ad counts. And after that, the, we, don't, we, we don't share any additional information with them. And that's why, actually, we have these two different systems. Uh, Rain Man is a Skunk Works project that is strictly for internal use. Uh, so. If you have access to Rain Man, you basically have access to the universe of data that we have. Whereas the customer facing one, uh, uh, which is the RNA system, reporting and analytics, every publisher can only see their data and it's already pre aggregated. Uh, all of the detail is lost and so on and so forth. Uh, yes. Um, we're working on it, and we're making it uh, we're making it better. Uh, there are uh, it's an area of high competition between different uh, providers of the services that we provide. Yes. Uh, well, uh, it works this way. Uh, the company has a very liberal policy about allowing you to work remotely since, after all, we're dealing with uh, a worldwide customer base and we need to have coverage. But uh, for my personal reasons, my mother lives here in McAllen. She's elderly. And I said, I need to go back and live with her so that I can look after her. And they said, go. So here I am. Um, so in in terms of what the company, what the competition, uh, or what the company does specifically, there are so many different services to provide. One of the things we do is we are um, kind of a collection point or an aggregation point for content delivery networks like Akamai and Limelight. Those are the companies that have servers distributed throughout the world that have copies of the videos. And whenever you want to watch a video, there's got to be some server near you that has a copy. And if it didn't have a copy, then it will soon have a copy there so that the next person that needs it will have it uh, locally. We contract with those content delivery networks, and we basically parcel out that service to our customers. But our customers can also do what's called a BYO. They, you bring your own CDN, and we connect you with them. We provide services so that you can connect with certain ad providers, or you can bring your own. Uh, we also provide analytics, or we can deliver the raw data to you so that you can do your own analysis, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it just depends on what customer we're dealing with, how much leverage they have, and what's economic for us to provide. Any more questions? All right. Thank you very much.